Hey guys, how you doing today? It's super, super windy outside, so I can't actually get out and do my usual recording without the whole audio just being like... So I'm just doing it for my desktop today. Uh, this is probably going to be one of the most important videos that I do. I, uh, this, These are the reasons why I do this channel right here, is this kind of stuff. The National Post has begun releasing, along with the Financial Post, uh, a series of articles called The Capitalist Manifesto. Can you believe it? They're, they're literally riffing on the Communist Manifesto, trying to defend uh, capitalism as if it's something that can be defended. I am super, super looking forward to this because it's along the same lines of another book that I'm familiar with called Cotton is King. This, this is a series of essays that was written by pro-slavers in the South on the lead-up to the Civil War. And it's full of wonderful gems like black people aren't people, God wants you to enslave black people, look how much money black people are making us. Uh, and of course it discredits the movement of pro-slavery entirely, that they're so psychotic the pro-slavers are so psychotic and incapable of actually understanding that what they're doing is deeply evil that they hang themselves with their own arguments. And so when the National Post said that they were going to do the Capitalist Manifesto, I knew immediately they're going to hang themselves, right? And what happens on day one is that they release like a blitz of articles. Three articles I've found so far. I'm sure they're going to release more. And each of these articles is as terrifyingly tone deaf and illiterate and psychopathic as you can possibly imagine. Whether it's Sean Spear, who outright admits that capitalism is an amoral system that's not responsive to moral systems while doubling down on some of the most childish uh, uh, anti-communist propaganda that exists in like a reefer madness kind of level, like gulags, famine, millions dead, oh! like, and you literally look at the evidence surrounding all of the claims, and it's easily discredited. It takes it takes like thirty minutes of research to find out that this is a childish claim that's being said by a child like Sean Spear, or perhaps Michael Higgins' twenty-minute read enormous winding history of capitalism that completely whitewashes out uh, slavery, uh, the, the slavery of the African continent, the slavery of the Indian continent, the genocide of the First Nations people in North America, the genocide of the Aztecs, the Incans, all of these things, like, and, and attempts to make the argument that capitalism made its wealth not from the enslavement of the people and the theft of their land, but because it's innovative. Like, this childish, backwards, white supremacist, illiterate way of communicating about how capitalism actually generates wealth. Well, that, you'll find that in the works of Michael Higgins right over here. But where the capitalists really reveal their illiteracy and their psychopathic nature you can find in the Financial Post's uh, article written by Matthew Lau. This terrifying apologetics uh, where, they, where he attempts to blame socialism and pretend that socialism is actually a worse system than capitalism, while Socialism has never had like a full-scale genocide of several people as well as an enslavement of several people in its history. So I don't understand how he gets it. Oh wait, yes I do, because of the illiteracy you see. Here's a direct quote that really just linchpins the whole uh, uh, argument. Socialists insist that they are entitled to a fair share of people's money, but why any share greater than zero is fair, they fail to explain. Now, it's this statement that socialists have failed to articulate their argument while simultaneously writing an article that is a riff on the Communist Manifesto, which is explicitly an explanation for why we should share the wealth of the money. 
it shows you how illiterate and depraved these psychopaths are. They, they don't read. They're not interested in reading. It's all propaganda and performative. But I'm going to take a moment and answer Matthew Lau very cleanly, right? See, Matthew Lau lives in a fantasy world where he believes that capitalists just make money from hard work and elbow grease, right? But here's the actual system that we live in, Matthew. The actual system begins like this. Food and shelter is withheld from us. That's square one. Food and shelter is withheld from us. By who? By the hereditary owners of the society. People like David Thompson, third baron of fleet, the wealthiest man in Canada, right? Literal, literal monarchy that still exists here in Canada. Uh, uh, he is the hereditary uh, uh, inheritor of billions of dollars, uh, just like... James Patterson, just like the Irvings, just like all of these billionaires who, what do they do? They buy up the housing, they buy up the food distribution network like the Westons have, right? And they withhold food and shelter from the populace. And the only thing the populace can do in order to get access to food and shelter is sell their labor to this class of citizen, right? Uh, uh, and of course... What's the wage that's being paid? Well, these days, it's not even enough to pay for rent. So that's why the whole system is breaking down, as, incidentally, Karl Marx predicted in the Communist Manifesto that you didn't read that explained all of this. The, uh, uh, the breakdown of the society is happening, and it's happening in a system that is called wage slavery. We sell ourselves into wage slavery in order to get enough money for food and shelter, and these days it's not even enough money for food and shelter. And this was explicitly stated in which book? Cotton is King. <laughs> the, the chattel slaves outright explicitly talked about wage slavery. Abraham Lincoln ran on a platform of abolishing wage slavery, the system I'm currently describing, which you defend. Well, you fail to defend. <laughs> right? And this really shows you and really illustrates the dark depravity of the capitalist class. They're not reading the literature. They haven't read Marx. They haven't read, like, they don't read Lincoln. They don't read anything about wage slavery. They don't understand anything about the system that they're in, which is what allows them to say absurdist nonsense, like, Oh, the surplus value that we steal from the workers who we enslave in a wage slave system, we have the right to keep. And how dare you expect us to use the wealth of the populace that was generated by the populace to improve the lot of the populace. This is their defense, right? This is what they are saying. Like, the, the depravity of it can't be overstated. They are defending a wage slave system and they are doing it through the most illiterate voices that exist in the nation. Straight up denying the existence of slavery, denying the existence of genocide, denying uh, uh, the uh, system itself, denying the structure of the system itself, pretending as though capitalists make their wealth uh, because they're hardworking innovators, as opposed to literally stealing surplus value from wage slaves that would starve on the street if they didn't sell themselves to the capitalist class. It's shameful what we're experiencing, but boy, am I ever happy they're starting to do it, because they're going to discredit themselves. They are discrediting themselves. And they are showing us very clearly and very cleanly that the only way forward for us is through rebellion. Yeah, my little dog, he's getting all spicy about it because he knows. We have to surround the halls of power. Psychopaths like this are getting major press in national papers. They are outright saying to your face, uh, socialists have never explained this. By the way, this is the Capitalist Manifesto, which is a rift on the Communist Manifesto, which explains exactly the situation that we're talking about. Right? So... They're playing dumb or they are dumb and they are at best psychopathic vampiric ghouls, 
We have to surround the halls of power. We have to have these politicians walk by us every single day. Or else we're going to be abandoned by psychos like Ma Matthew Lau. Right? Very, very straightforwardly. Very straightforwardly. All right, guys. This is the end of this video. Like, share, subscribe. Please. Uh, uh, I've got a Patreon down below. I could use even a dollar. The rent is too goddamn high, guys. The rent is too goddamn high. And boy, would I not like to experience homelessness. That'd be really, really great. So please consider donating. We have to support leftist voices. People who are actually pushing back against this capitalist death cult. That, that is now asserting itself as a, as a death cult. Explicitly. Rebel. Revolt. Repent. Good luck. We're going to need it.